Before we go, I was interested in a story today by Laurie's Dixon in Newcastle about the Arnott's Biscuit Factory. This is yet again one of those wonderful stories. Laurie's was making the point that the famous biscuit brand will return to its origins at Morpeth near Maitland since Steve Arnott, the great, great, great grandson of the founder, has decided to follow in the family's footsteps and has purchased the historic bakehouse once owned by the founder, William Arnott. Now, Steve, there it is. Steve Arnott, the new owner, has a food scientist, Alison, for a wife. They've undertaken a massive restoration of the old Morpeth Bakery used to bake the first Arnott's biscuits. Look at it, that's the building, in 1847. Mind you, they were called ship's biscuits to keep the sailors fed. They were made of flour, water and salt. Wouldn't that have a taste to it? Rock hard, you had to be, they had to be soaked by the sailors in milk or water to make them soft enough to eat. What many people don't understand, and certainly kids at school wouldn't be taught, Morpeth was the biggest river port in the region. One of Australia's inland ports, like Burke. The William Arnott story is fascinating. He was born in 1827. There he is, the old man in Scotland. Later apprenticed to a baker and a confectioner. With his younger brother, David, he followed his family to Australia, arriving in 1848 and set up the baker shop in Morpeth until 1851. Then they went hunting for gold with no luck and came back to life as a baker and a pastry cook. Now, for those who want to say that climate change is responsible for everything, William Arnott was prospering until two great floods of the Hunter River in 1857 brought disaster. William Arnott had put up a new building in 1856. It was flooded. He'd hardly recovered from the floods of 57 when he was flooded again in 1861. Must have been climate change, eh? By 1862, he was in financial trouble. One of his creditors demanded full payment. He moved to Newcastle, set up a business via loans from friends. He repaid all his debts and William Arnott became famous for bread and cakes and especially sweet and plain biscuits. And of course, ships biscuits, in which there was a big trade from the growing number of ships in the ports of Morpeth and Newcastle. William Arnott had two sons by his first marriage. His first wife died. The eldest son specialised in biscuits. And from 1882, the biscuits were sent by ship to Sydney. The market proved very profitable, more so when the Hawkesbury River Railway Bridge was opened in 1889. The family then bought a factory in Sydney and at the time had some 40 employees, but by 1894, the number of employees, think about this, 1894, the number of employees had increased to nearly 800 in Sydney and Newcastle, making Arnott's biscuits. William Arnott died in July 1901, and now the name is being revisited at the home of its origins. What started as a humble endeavour became an empire. The original Arnott's Bakehouse in Morpeth has been born again, transformed into a guest house, showcasing the Arnott's memorabilia that has been collected over many years. But of course, Families go in different directions. What the future holds is unclear. Stephen Allison's son is at university and he's not studying baking. Sadly, the family now only own the tradition. The Arnott's Biscuit Company was acquired by the Campbell Soup Company, American owned in 1997. I should say that the Campbell Soup Company, by the way, was in a lot of trouble last year in America by claiming that its beef and chicken broths contained no MSG. The company was accused of misleading consumers and violating consumer protection laws. Nonetheless, the Arnott's family tradition lives on at the Morpeth Bakehouse. Both Morpeth, Morpeth and the Arnott's Bakehouse are well worth a visit. As my dearly departed friend Sir James Killen would say, if that's not a good story, we are in trouble.